there were a lot of very interesting things that came out of the hiring and firing by the president yesterday. Now let us get this right. The president did not name his cabinet yesterday. Yeah, What he did was to tell us who was in that cabinet. What he did was to tell us that he had retained Bwana Fred Matiangi as a CS interior. Okay. Of course, Matiangi has been in an acting capacity since the demise of his uh, predecessor, uh, Joseph Kaiseri, okay, in uh, July yeah, last year. Also, what the president did yesterday was to tell us that all female appointments in the last uh, cabinet were out. Foreign CS uh, Amina Mohammed, who uh, in my view did an excellent job, out, yeah, and then Rachel Omamo, uh, CS Defense, Inje, okay. Now Rachel Omamo's appointment as uh, CS Defense, uh, I've never quite figured out that one. <laughs> With all due respect to this very very talented uh, Kenyan woman, yeah, uh, my view is that she has plenty of other talents that would have served much better in another portfolio, okay? Uh, because in my view, <laughs> appointing a CS uh, defense, in fact, even put Rachel in very uncomfortable positions. You see, the top echelons of uh, our military have not yet been penetrated by women, okay? So, <laughs> there are a lot of very uncomfortable moments, yeah? where the discussions being held, you know, and all these big, all these men in the room, yeah? <laughs> and one single lady, yeah, in a room crowded with men, eh? you know what happens in such a situation. The poor woman, no matter how uh, gifted they are, will always find themselves uh, on the defensive. Alafi maneno ya manamuke kuingia kwa military barracks, I don't know if you've ever entered a military barracks. If you have, you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay? I mean, there are some places that are just dominated by men. Okay? Now, I'm not saying this is good, but I'm just saying appointing a female CS, yeah, who, uh, whose work is to keep on visiting these places, I, I think that is torturing the person you have appointed. Anyway, that's my view. Now, a section of the press has made a very big deal about the fact that for the first time since 2013, okay, uh, the president was alone, okay, no DP Ruto next to him, yeah, because in all the previous appointments, you'll only see DP Ruto there. All the major announcements by Jubilee government, Ruto is always there. This time he was missing, conspicuously so. I agree with those analysts that this was a very big deal. Yeah, especially when you take into account the fact that uh, the president kept on saying, I, I have appointed according to the powers conferred to me by the constitution. In the past, it was always we, 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 yeah, implying himself and his deputy president. Folks, apo ikomaneno. And then to make, uh, you know, to <coughs> draw even more attention to the fact that all is not well, was the president's body language. Hey. It was all over the place. Definitely not confident. Definitely not. There was something here that was just not right. Okay? But personally, what I found most interesting and fascinating was the reshuffle in what I shall call the anti-crime department. Yeah, I found that extremely fascinating. Ndegwa Muhoro, Directorate of uh, Criminal Investigation, out. Okay? Actually, his firing was uh, clothed in very good language. Yeah, he's going to be redeployed. <laughs> and then the biggest shocker, you know, I was listening to this, and then I heard the name Keraiko Tobiko, and it didn't register immediately. I asked myself, "Hey, eh, that name sounds familiar." <laughs> Shame on me, because Keraiko Tobiko is a name that uh, I should. This is the last name that I should forget. Yeah? Or is the last name that should not register immediately. Why? 
because Kereko Tobiko has a very long history the Kumakucha uh, brand. Now I don't like blowing my own trumpet. In fact, I normally get very uncomfortable uh, doing it. Yeah, people keep on asking me, you are right here, why don't you make a recording, tell people, I was right, I was right, you see, I was right. Hey, that one is difficult for me. But of course I have no issues making recordings about when I was wrong, okay? And uh, image uh, experts are telling me I'm getting it wrong. I should don't play very much when I'm wrong, and when I'm right I should just uh, shout it all over the place, yeah? For the image of Kumekucha. Eh? <laughs> but I guess I'll never get it. Eh? I just, I'm just, I just like being forthright. Yeah, that's me. Anyway, you're going to indulge me here. Yeah. Uh, definitely, there was something the Kumekucha blog covered on Kereiko Tobiko that uh, could not be found anywhere else in the press. Okay. Because one of our informants who was present during the grilling of uh, Kereiko Tobiko. <laughs> yeah, you know, in the parliamentary select committee uh, talks to an, uh, an appointee, yeah, and they shoot questions at him, yeah. In Kenya, we call that grilling, <laughs> or rather, we love to call it grilling. Eh? So, this informant told us something very interesting, or rather, told me something very interesting, yeah. During the grilling of uh, Tobiko for his appointment as uh, director of public prosecutions, yeah, the post he has just resigned from. Yeah, one of the members of that panel, yeah, Ababu uh, Namamba, yeah, who was then uh, ODM Dam, yeah, of course, Vindubi Chenjanga, yeah, but at that time he was ODM Dam and he was one of the people grilling uh, Tobiko, yeah, and most uh, ODM legislators at that time were against his appointment with good reason. I'll tell you why in a minute. So, informant noticed that uh, Ababu Namamba was holding a piece of paper, yeah that had the Kumekucha blog logo very clearly at the top. Meaning that uh, the legislator was using our blog, information from our blog, yeah, uh, to grill Tobiko for the job. Yeah? Very flattering that was eh, at that time. This was in June 11, uh, 2011. Which brings me to the other point about Tobiko. Now, Tobiko was appointed in 2011. Yeah, he took over his office in 2011. Now, according to a long-suffering, uh, abused constitution, which some people use when convenient and ignore when not convenient, <laughs> anyway, according to our constitution, the DPP is supposed to serve a maximum of eight years. In June this year, Tobiko would have completed seven years. Therefore, next year, he'd have had to leave the office. Yeah, maximum, eight years. So did Tobiko canvas for a new job, knowing very well that his current employment uh, is very soon coming to an end? I don't think so, because uh, Tobiko's exit and uh, Mohoro's exit at the CID are related, they are linked. Which would suggest that uh, there's something yeah, about the uh, office of the Director of Public Prosecutions and the CID, yeah, you know, those, those work together in tandem, yeah, criminal investigations, the file is passed on to the DP, yeah, and he, prose he prosecutes, okay. There's something there that the government is very uncomfortable about, yeah. I have a few ideas, <laughs> but for now your guess is as good as mine, yeah, I have to dig into this further, yeah. But for now I can tell you for sure, Iko Kitu Hapo. But in my view, the saddest thing of all is that uh, our constitution is not working the way it is supposed to work. Okay? It is being frustrated. Yeah? People are putting shortcuts, creating shortcuts here and there. Yeah? People are messing up things here and there to make sure it does not work how it is supposed to work. What am I saying? The DPP is supposed to have something called security of tenure. Actually, they have security of tenure. What does that mean? They cannot be fired by the president. Nobody can interfere with what they are doing. Yeah? So, you get a situation where the IABC commits illegalities, the DPP jumps straight on it and prosecutes Chebukati yeah? and Chiloba and company. Yeah? But as it is, uh, the DPP has been acting 
like an arm of government. The DPP has been acting like uh, they are just part of government, serving the interests of government rather than the interests of the public. Okay, and the biggest illustration of this, I mean the biggest confirmation of this, is you have a DPP who resigns and pop, he has a cabinet uh, job. <laughs> it's like he's being rewarded for really protecting the government and uh, important people in Kenya over his uh, tenure as uh, DPP. This is fascinating because this is one of the issues uh, the Komikucha blog raised way back in 2011 about Tobiko. Yeah, we said that his appointment is deliberate and it's designed to protect eh? when you're Kenya, hmm? yeah, when you're inchi, not when you're inchi. Hmm? Those people who own Kenya, the masters of impunity, yeah, the untouchables, yeah, the people who cannot be prosecuted at Ofanya Nini, at Oite International Press Conference, they just cannot be prosecuted. And this is why to date, yeah, uh, the people responsible for the death of Baby Pendo, the people responsible for the many other youngsters who died in the, during the electioneering period, yeah, those people are known, but they have never been prosecuted, and they will never be prosecuted, yeah, not under the Jubilee regime, okay? That's Kenya for you. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.